So thank you everyone for coming. Um, I am calling the select board meeting to order for this Tuesday, November 5, 2019. As we do for every meeting, before every meeting, uh, we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today we have a special guest uh, pack, pack four from the, from the Cub Scouts here in town. They're gonna lead us with our Pledge of Allegiance. So let's rise for that, please. Hi guys and girls. Flags over here, Josh. Flags over there. Flags here. Face the flag. Face Hold on, we gotta wait for Grayson. You're not doing it? Okay. All right. Face the flag. On you guys. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, guys. Oh, this kid's a chair. Excellent. Beautiful. Okay, let's go both ways. Okay, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. They did a great job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. All right, public forum. Is there anyone who'd like to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions about town government? Come on up. Hi. Jeff Kelly, Fog Ash Street, 47-year resident of Hopkinton. Um, I'm in a butter to center school, and I'm also on the Historic District Commission. And I'm wondering what is happening with center school. Okay, so public comment. We don't get we don't get into the weeds. We don't do back and forth. Okay. Uh, you can talk to Mr. Kamalu, and uh, he can kind of bring you up to speed. But we don't do back and forth on. Okay. On, but thank you. So he's not going to get into it either. Oh, okay. So my question to yeah, we got take it. it offline. Talk to, talk to Mr. Kamalu. Give him okay. a call over the week, and, and he'll he'll. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Sabine St. Pierre. I live at uh, One Woody Island over on Lake Maspinock. I know you're all well aware of the unfortunate uh, lake weed situation on the lake. Uh, we've been there 14 years. About four years ago, it was in dire straits in our cove, um, and it was unswimmable. Um, my kids refused to go in the water. Our end is not as bad. We know the North Basin is terrible. It will be almost impassable next year for those that live there. It's their backyard. Um, and we spend a lot of time over there as well. Um, I, when it came up four years ago, I was very nervous about the topic of herbicides. We know that a committee was put together. Um, they've been working over the last four years researching all the different options. At this point, uh, herbicides, I think, is going to be our, their number one option. And it's scary as a parent having kids that want to swim in the water, but I think to myself, I let my kids, I don't think twice, most people don't think twice about letting their kids swim in a pool with chlorine. And when you start to research and really look at these herbicides and the dilution parts per million, and then further diluted, because they're just talking spot treatments, it's not like dumping buckets of herbicides, um, I think you realize it's, they're not as scary as you think. Um, so I just implore people, to really become educated about herbicides before making a decision. There's going to be a lot of opinions about them. Um, people are scared, but I think if they do the research and learn the facts and make an educated opinion, um, I think they'll come to find out that this is our best uh, solution, unfortunately, at this point, but it's what's going to help save our lake. So thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hold on, Jake. Hello. Um, my name is Kathy Sweeney. Um, I live at 193 West Main Street. Um, I'm on the North Basin of Lake Maspinock. Um, and I've been there for about 15 years now. Um, and I've watched the weed problem 
grow to an immensely challenging problem. It's scary for the kids. It's scary for the lake residents who absolutely love our lake. We have a really great community. Um, and we've been exploring options to try and get this under control, but I really feel like we're losing time. The, amount, the degree in which the, the weeds have become much more severe and there's more types of weeds is um, alarming. And I really feel that if we don't get a hold on really managing this problem um, realistically, we're going to get so far behind it that it's going to be much more devastating for us to get a hold of it. And I've done, I've looked into the research. I've been involved with um, the committees in trying to make sure that I understand it. I am a mother of three. I have dogs, pets. Um, we have parties, you know, and we would never want to do anything that would jeopardize our lake. Uh, but I just feel like the spot treatment and the, and the opportunity that we have to responsibly use, use these chemicals to, or herbicides, I'm sorry, not chemicals, to get ahead of this problem is in front of us now, or we're going to get so far behind it that it's going to be a much more drastic problem. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie? Thank you. Jackie Pononzoni, 12 Wood Street. I just want to talk about the Main Street Corridor Project and the um, petition that you have in front of you. And I just want to let you all know that my husband and I have spoken to multiple attorneys regarding the letter we received in August of 2019 from the town that the town no longer needs an easement on our property. I have been advised that this is a municipal project and it can change at any time. So since my property is on Article 47, I am 100% involved with the project and at risk. I might add that I was informed by the town in September of 2017 I was not supposed to be on the plan. So with regards to the town's response that it, it is the will of the people at the May 2018 town meeting, well it was not. I never had my voice spoken at the town meeting. And since I did not know my property was on Article 47, why would we at this point trust anything you have told us? Special town meeting petition, Article 47. It, <clears throat> The people of the corridor were not notified by the mail prior to that meeting, and they want their voices heard. I'm here asking you, our select board, to support the residents of this great town of Hawkington and approve our special request for the town meeting. The town's mistake, as they were tried to do this plan, but they did not partner with the corridor residents. Anybody who spoke against this plan was disregarded and ignored. I know I was treated very poorly through the process, and I am a woman-owned, I'm a resident, I'm a woman-owned small business, and I had to file Freedom of Information Acts to get information. The town has not been honest and forthright from the start of this project. 15 seconds. Success or failure lies in the downtown administration and select board due to the fact how the town has handled the project. Whatever the outcome of the burden of this special town meeting, it falls on the town, not the unwilling property owners who want to fight to keep their private property rights. The town of Hawkington and its administration is at fault for not being honest and forthright with the corridor residents in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, hi, I'm uh, Walter Garland, 50 Downey Street in Hockington. Uh, I also live on the lake in the North Basin. I've been there for uh, seven years. Uh, and uh, the, the weed problem is just out of control. Uh, it has just gotten worse and worse every year to the point where the North Basin is, is practically unusable. Props get uh, wound up in the weeds. Uh, motors get fouled. I've had both my jet skis and the my pontoon boat has just been unusable at times. So uh, the remedy that we had to this point was the extended drawdown uh, to help us, uh, and that was supposed to happen last year. We tried to, but that didn't happen because of a single resident on the lake. Uh, we tried again this year to find a solution for that one resident that uh, was against uh, or opposed to the extended drawdown, uh, and. Uh, despite our best efforts and a, a lot of work on a number of people's behalf, uh, that we were just not able to find a solution that would, uh, would please these people. Uh, so uh, we did find out that they didn't lose water at seven feet. So 
we tried to take that to the town and say instead of eight feet let's draw it down to seven feet uh, and we didn't get support from that from the town because uh, we understand that this year is an odd situation that uh, there's going to be a new uh, gate installed in the dam uh, and it's going to require a coffer dam and so we weren't going to have the control over the lake is what we were told uh, that Eric Cardi said. So it looks like the extended drawdown is dead for yet another year uh, and, and, and perhaps may never be. Seconds. Okay, so the net is herbicides. <laughs> extended drawdown is not working. There's going to be a proposal for, before you for herbicides. Please, please go that, down that path. That we have to have a solution. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Is that it? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so the town manager appointments. Um, Mr. Kamal. Yes. Um, with, with your permission, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may invite Casey Morrow. Yes, um, I'm respectfully requesting the board affirm the town manager's appointment of Casey Morrow as the town's public health nurse. Uh, she comes to Hopkinton with extensive experience in nursing. Uh, she worked for St. Vincent Hospital for two years in oncology, cardiac care, and ICU. She also worked for two years at Spalding Hospital in Cambridge. She has a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. When we spoke to your references, uh, Casey, they described you as bright, motivated, diplomatic, and responsible. A former supervisor said, you are very respected by patients, doctors, and fellow nurses. We were also told you are great working as part of a team. And parallel with that, when called upon, you do perform independently. Thanks. And this was very important for us um, for various reasons. Uh, most importantly, the fact that we are establishing the public, re-establishing, I should say, re-establishing the public health nurse position, <laughs> exactly, um, uh, in the Board of Health Department, and for the most part, you'll be expected to be working independently, but though overall under the uh, supervision of the Health Services Director. Uh, we also like the fact that you really convinced everybody during the interview that you want to work for your hometown. I do, yeah. I care a lot about Hopkinton. Yes, and for the board's information, we had two rounds of interviews. Uh, the first round of interviews, we had the health director, deputy fire chief, youth and family services uh, counselor, Colleen Souza, as well as the human resources director, Maria Casey. Second round of interviews, we had the health services director, the deputy fire chief, Miller, the Assistant Town Manager Elaine Razras, uh, Senior Centre Director Amy Beck, Youth and Family Services Director Don Alcott Miller, Police Chief Edward Lee, and also Human Resources Generalist Christine Merrill. I also want to take this opportunity to really thank the Board of Health for allowing to house this position. Uh, we have re received tremendous support from the Board as well as from the Director. We also are very excited that, uh, Casey, you will be working with a wide range of our town departments. Yeah. Um, we have put everybody on notice that you'll soon be uh, contacting the offices to begin your work here in Hopkinton. Great. Great. Thanks, Casey. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm excited uh, to be here. Board members? Mr. Kamalo only interviewed with five people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Casey, I think, interviewed with 45. Yeah. I was about 45. I think it counted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, I just wanted to say welcome. I read a couple of resumes and everything, and I was 
Thank you. Impressed, and uh, I'm really excited to start the program. And welcome to Hoppington. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here and have this position, and you know, just turn it into something great. Yeah, I, I'm just really welcome to town. I, and I really want to, and I also want to thank our health director. You know, um, ever since he came, the the programs and the directives that uh, that he's put forth, along with the uh, the uh, the board are just phenomenal, and now bringing on a, uh, a uh, some more public health um, assistant, it's just going to be great. You know, our town just keeps getting better and better. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming. Thanks. I just want to say welcome aboard. You know, I, uh, when when Sean had proposed that we we hire a nurse, uh, I'm delighted to see the results that it's yielded. Uh, Sean has promised that uh, there's a lot of need. For a, for a public health nurse in town, so uh, welcome aboard and welcome to the challenges of Hopkinton. Thank you. Yeah, so same thing, welcome aboard. So I am a director of nurses at another place. Oh, okay. I'm happy to be a nurse myself. Oh, okay. Uh, let's just call this your interview process if you want a pretty good job. You're welcome. Okay. You get through the five weeks and the other four okay. that you just did, you're, you're yes. certainly qualified. So. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome to town. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kamala, we need a motion for that? Please. Satino? Uh, okay. I, uh, uh, I'd like to make a motion to confirm the town manager's appointment of Casey Morrow, public health nurse. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries. Thank you. Thank you Welcome so much. Board. Thank you. Thanks, Casey. Thank you very Thank much. You. Mr. Kamalu. Yes. Stephanie. <laughs> Good evening. Again, I'm respectfully requesting the board affirm the town manager's appointment of Stephanie Pemberton uh, as the administrative assistant in the land use planning and permitting office. Um, put simply, when we interviewed Stephanie, we were very convinced that your private sector experience, especially in customer service, would add value to town hall services. Um, she comes to us with 13 years of experience working for a physical therapy aid and client care specialist at Lom Lomonaco Rehabilitation Services. Uh, she has an associate degree of science in health sciences from Dean College. In speaking with your former supervisors, they told us that your 13 years uh, at your last job really talks to your stability reliability and commitment. Um, you were described as being detail-oriented, intelligent and resourceful and clearly that will help you a great deal upstairs on the third floor. <laughs> uh, your previous supervisor stated that um, they understand your desire to move to, into public service. We're always looking for opportunities for people who celebrate public service. Uh, and, and again, I really want to welcome you to the town. There were two rounds of interviews. The first round of interview, uh, we had the principal planner, John Gelsich, the land use department administrative assistant, Kobe Wallace, fire prevention officer, Tom Poria, as well as the HR generalist, Christine Merrill. Second round of interviews, assistant town manager, Elaine Lazarus, was present. And so were John Gelsich, the principal planner, uh, Kobe Wallace again, and we also had Adina from the Land Use Department as well as Maria Casey, the HR Director. Welcome to the town. Thank you. So you made it through that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations and welcome to town. Uh, board members, start with uh, Mr. Nasser. Well, have, uh, you know, seeing the growth in the town, I think uh, we definitely need help upstairs. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Uh, it's it's most welcome. I think uh, you have uh, going to be busy upstairs. <laughs> well, I already said welcome to Stephanie earlier. I'm, I'm upstairs a lot getting getting permits, and uh, yes, she handled uh, my uh, plumbing and electrical permits uh, in my gas fitting one today also. So thank you very much. It was very efficient, and uh, I really appreciate you coming because uh, I I really do uh, have an affinity for that third floor. Thank, thank you, you. sir. So Elaine's all in, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All good. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Welcome. Thank you. Very good. Well, I just, the, the thing that struck me was this is quite a departure from your previous 
profession and jobs and uh, how do you think you're really going to like working with uh, land planning as a, as a different it's definitely different um, but I'm excited for something different I I loved my job but I was I needed something new and I'm excited for a challenge <laughs> maps and plans and all that not intimidating <laughs> no not too intimidating good good welcome aboard thank you welcome aboard we're lucky to have you Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, if yes. I may, oh, did you want to? No, you're on. I'd like to make a motion to confirm the town manager's appointment of Stephanie Pemberton as an administrative assistant uh, up on the third floor. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries, thank you. Welcome aboard, Stephanie. Thank you, I'm very excited. <laughs> Mr. Kamalu. Finally, uh, Jessica Leverance. Um, I always enjoy introducing new personnel to the team. Um, in terms of Jessica being in front of the board, I think I have one simple statement. Uh, we always hear a great deal about Perhaps I should say we hear a great deal of questions when people leave the town. And in this case, I am very pleased to announce that Jessica is coming back to the town of Hopkinton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll let the board ask you ask any questions you may have. Mary Jo, start us up. Well, I have uh, done things with Jessica for when she was here in town. Uh, for the senior workout program and a number of other programs and gotten information and she's always been very helpful and very forthcoming so I'm glad to see you back. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. To her, where did you go? <laughs> uh, the town of Charlton. Oh yeah? How was that? It was good. It was an excellent experience. So sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah they, didn't ha they didn't have an HR department. Got it. Um, so yeah, so it was a, a, a really good learning experience for me Great. too. Great. They have good football programs out in Charleston. Charleston <laughs> is very strong football. Good for you. Well, I'm glad you're back. This is great. Yes. Uh, I also met Jessica earlier today <laughs> and she introduced herself to me. Um, are we going to have a place for Jessica to fit? That area needs a little more needs a little more room. We gotta we gotta work that out. Yes, Point well taken. We're striking for <laughs> we're striking for office space. <laughs> we'll make it work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome aboard. I'm sure we'll be able to make space for you. Uh, and uh, look forward to, to working with you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you I'm looking okay. forward Next to it. Well. Make it quick. How many uh, how many rounds did, did you have to go through considering that it's, it's an HR position you must have hit everybody I'm just joking okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I speak for the rest of the board to tell you that Mr. Catino did not bring his A game today <laughs> uh, uh, so Jessica thank you very much for coming back we appreciate it um, and welcome back thank you so, so much that said Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to confirm the town manager's appointment of Jessica Lorenz, uh, the administrative benefits support, and it's the you left it at and uh, in the human resources department. Yes, and in the human resources department. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Hearing none. Carries. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back, Jessica. Thank you. Good to see. You. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the consent agenda. Um, so the select board will consider approving the 10-22-19 board minutes. Um, uh, item number two, gifts. Select board will consider accepting a gift of $52.92 from Amy Ritterbush on behalf of her son who received extra donations for her Eagle Scout project for the Hughes Property Trail. He would like to donate the extra funds to the town's general fund. Um, number three is a fee waiver approval. Um, select board will consider approving a fee waiver request from Mina Kaushik on behalf of the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton 
The special temporary alcohol license was approved for the South Asian Circle of Opkins annual Diwala, Diwali Gala Festival of Lights at the October 2219 Select Board meeting. The request for fee waiver was received after the meeting. Uh, item four, holiday banner request. Uh, we will consider approving a request from Amanda Fouché on behalf of the Hopkins Chamber of Commerce for a holiday banner to stretch across Main Street. Advertising the holiday stroll on December 7, 19. The banner will be hung on November 24th, 2019 till December 7th, allowing 14 days maximum for the banner to be up per town bylaws. The banner will be 40 feet by four feet. Number five, parade permit, Remax, Executive Realty, Remax Charitable Foundation Annual 5K Road Race. The select board will consider approving <coughs> a parade permit application from Sandy Lucchese on behalf of the Remax Executive Realty Charitable Foundation for a road race to be held on Saturday, November 23, 2019 at 0800 hours and race beginning at 0900 hours at the Hopkins Country Club. Expected number of participants is 125. Does anyone on the board like to break any of those up? There are none. Mr. Catino. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the entire consent agenda. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries? Okay. So before we go to the next item, um, I need to let you guys know here that um, the parking lot out there behind Bill's Pizza in the back is not for town business. Um, I just got a text from the owner there saying he's going to start towing some cars. So if you're parked out there uh, and you don't want your car towed, I would move it. If you don't mind it being towed, stay right here. Um, Special temporary alcohol license and parade permit, Hopkins and Running Club, Hopkins 10K, and Andy Wellzell Scholarship Road Race. Uh, we will consider approving a special temporary alcohol license parade permit for Wade Marshall on behalf of the Running Club uh, and the Andy Wellzell Scholarship Road Race to be held on Saturday, December 7th from 9 to noon, beginning and ending at 40 Fruit Street. Uh, road closures are being expected for one way on Fruit Street between Wood and Cunningham. Expected number of participants is 250. There will be no rain date. Permission has been granted by Parks and Rec to use Victory Field from 7 till 1. They, will, they have also granted permission to set up tents two days prior to the event. Tickets will be sold and exchanged for beer after IDs are checked and wristbands attached. <laughs> Alcohol will be provided by Startline Brewery and will be served by TIPS certified servers. Mr. Kamalo. Through the chair, the applicant is here tonight and um, is available to describe the race, uh, especially if there's any past experience with the town. Yeah, this is the third year we're having the race, so I think we've worked out. You know, every year it's gone smooth. We haven't had any issues. Town, police, EMTs, everything's gone really well. So we're pretty, we're pretty happy with it. And we've been able to keep it all in a uh, very Hopkinton focus. Once again, you know, we're involving Start Line, and this year the food's going to be provided by the Spoon. So um, they've been gracious enough to gracious enough to help us out. And uh, again, the scholarships that uh, we do are for two uh, or Hopkinton High School graduating seniors. And it's, we call it the Pay It Forward Scholarship. And what they do is they submit uh, an essay based on somebody who's had an influence in their life and uh, based on those uh, qualities that uh, Andy Wazel had, uh, really giving back to the community. And so we tried to, to move that forward uh, with uh, scholarships to Hopkinton High School students. So it's been a great success the last two years, and I want to thank you for your support. Great. So looking at the permitting team, uh, it looks like building, zoning, uh, DPW, fire, and police all are having no issues with your application. So it looks like everything is order, in order. Uh, I will say that uh, it's my third year in a row being able to sit up here and say what a great job and what a, uh, an awesome thing to remember, a great guy in town. Great. Uh, Andy was a really, really good guy. And uh, it's, it's nice to see people from town honor uh, and do things in the memory to carry on with the scholarships and fundraising like that. So uh, personally, I think it's an awesome thing to do. So um, I appreciate that. Mr. So, Chair, I move the uh, request for a, to approve the request for a special temporary alcohol license and parade permit 
uh, for the Hoppington Running Club for the Hoppington 10K Andy Wilzell Scholarship Road Race to be held on Saturday, December 7th from 9 till noon. Second. Second. Okay, two seconds. Um, any further discussion from the board? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Thank you, Wade. Thank, Thank you, Wade. Thanks. Let's hope my car's still there. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kamala, we're doing this means tested thing now, or are we going to hold off? We can hold off. We can go to the next. Is, it is the uh, 110 grill here? Okay. So, uh, so our next item is the 110 grill change of manager. The select board will consider approving a change of manager application from Robert Walker on behalf of 110 grill LS Hopkinton LLC DBA 110 grill 1 Lumber Street Suite 100 for a change of manager from Gene Ryan to Stephen Melendez, Jr. Um, Mr. Kamal. Yes. Um, the, the, the proposed manager is here tonight, uh, and uh, we have done the, the required background review, and there are no issues that we identified, and he is here to answer any questions the board may have. So uh, I will open it up to the board. Why don't we start with Mr. Herr this time? Is Mr. W so Mr. Walker is still the owner, correct? Uh, yes, sir. He is? Robert's uh, still the owner? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so he's just submitting the application to name this gentleman. The new manager. The prior manager. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm good. Mr. Catino? Uh, I'm, I'm good with it also. They, they, they've been a, 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 a good uh, addition to the town. Yeah. Mr. Nasrullah? I agree. I think they've been a great addition to the town. Um, and I'm all set. Mayor Jo? Well, I noticed the permitting team comments were all favorable, so um, I'm in on this one. Uh, the only thing I see is the health department needs to receive updated credentials and an application for this change in their food permit. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we can do this pending that the uh, health department gets everything all done? Yes, and these are two independent processes. However, the request from the Board of Health has been communicated to the applicant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Chair, one other thought if I could real yes, quick. So, the license that we really worry about that you'll oversee as the manager is the alcohol license, mm -hmm. right? And the town operates uh, stings, just so you know. Uh, and the state operates stings, as you probably know. Yep. And we've had some incidents in town uh, where that's uncovered some uh, uh, controls issues inside the management of organizations. Uh, so we'd encourage you to be aware of that and, and make sure that uh, that alcohol license you protect uh, at all costs, like we don't serve people at the bar that are drunk. We don't let people jump and you know, there's all kinds of things that we can't allow because that license is on that wall. Uh, so please kind of guard that closely and take it seriously and all will be good. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a, um, a motion to approve the change of manager for the 110 grill from Gene Ryan to Stephen Melendez, Jr. Second. Any further discussion from the board? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstains? Carries? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So going back, uh, Mr. Nees, you're all set here? Should we include a chair for Leslie? Should we include a chair for Leslie? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. <coughs> Leslie. Leslie, do you want to come up and sit? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come here. Oh, right here. good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I see Ms. Ficari over there. Mm -hmm. Fellow pit alum. You and your pit. <laughs> All right, let's have it, Mr. Nees. Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, so we're here tonight on the uh, new means-tested senior exemption. 
the circuit breaker amount for the most recent year was eleven hundred dollars you need to decide tonight on a percentage amount between fifty and two hundred percent since the tax rate recap is not yet complete we can't be sure of the actual effect on the tax rate but our estimate is that this exemption will increase the residential rate by approximately one to three cents so we have provided you with a memo uh, that outlines the effect of your selection so uh, from 50 to 200 percent and you can choose 50 percent 100 percent 200 percent or any percentage in between 50 and 200 percent but uh, it is expected to make a, a difference in the total annual tax for a residential property of anywhere from approximately two dollars per year to twenty dollars per year questions okay. no nope. board what do you have so 50 percent to 200 percent explain that further to me please All right, so the circuit breaker amount is 1100 if you were to choose 50 percent someone who received a 1100 dollar circuit breaker on their state income tax would receive a means tested senior exemption of 550 dollars that's the lowest at 200 percent uh, someone who received a circuit breaker amount of eleven $1 hundred dollars would receive a senior uh, means tested tax exemption of twenty two hundred dollars on their property taxes on the property Here tax. In yeah. so in for Hockey. us to help our seniors the most that's we correct. go with the two hundred percent number which would impact all of us collectively at about twenty bucks on average a year that is correct this is funded through the residential class only so initially everyone uh, in a residential class would pay a higher annual tax rate including the people who get the exemption of approximately two to twenty dollars per year and then the people that have qualified and there are 33 of them uh, would get a senior tax exemption depending on the percentage that you select sir and with your permission the average if you look at the right column on the memo for an average priced home of about six hundred thousand that impact would be eleven dollars a year on everybody else who would be providing that benefit to the 33 people got it so uh mr chair my sense is that uh, the people i represent which is the same ones you represent the town of hockington uh, in general would support anything we can do to help our seniors in, their, in, in this situation where there's a means testing going on uh, and there's an opportunity to give them a, a, a break on the tax bills which are very difficult for a lot of folks so I'm all in and I'm all in at 200% would you like to make that motion is this a public hearing though no okay uh, I thought oh I'm sorry it's 730 um, so uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen endorse uh, a means tested senior senior citizen property tax exemption uh, with an eleven $1 hundred dollar circuit breaker at two hundred percent is that motion in line with what here we go it, 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 it is oh this would be the motion you handed me yeah. never mind <laughs> scratch that previous motion <laughs> yours was great I thought, actually mine is pretty much like that <laughs> kudos, kudos goes up to pick it's just not all this mumbo jumbo. I move that the way. select board approve senior means tested tax exemptions under Chapter 234 of the Acts of 2018 for 33 applicants approved by the Board of, Assess board of Assessors at 200% of the prior year's state circuit breaker credit amount, which was $1,100. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Yeah, just a couple questions. Um, would this need to be renewed every year? It does. You will have to vote on this every year, and you will have the option every year of selecting a number between 50 and 200 percent and the circuit breaker amount is likely to change each tax year as well and is there any a affirmative actions that our seniors would need to take to avail themselves with this benefit yes sir there's two with your permission mr chairman oh you're going to get into it with the lawyer have fun there's there, <laughs> there's two things they have to do they have to file for the circuit breaker and receive it and then they have to file with the board of assessors and be approved by the board of assessors and then that pool of people will come to you here every year uh, and and that's the way it will go forward and do we have a, uh, a messaging campaign to let people know that this is available to them yeah. 
or you answer? Sure, I'd be happy to answer. Yes, we uh, at, we did press releases. Uh, we had it on the sign board. We reached out to everybody who had the uh, other senior exemptions. We went through the senior center. I mean, we've, we've been very aggressive in, in working. And the Board of Assessors uh, really worked and sought a lot of applicants. And uh, so this first year, we got 37 applicants. Four people did not meet the criteria. We expect and hope that as word gets out, more people who get the circuit breaker will apply. We know that more people got the circuit breaker than who applied, but we don't know who they are. And we don't know if some of them are renters. So. And if I could add, you might remember that we came before the board several months ago, and at that point we only had three or four applications. Right. So we asked you to put the word out, and um, the CFO did an excellent job of putting the word out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, the website. And, you know, again, we ended up with 37, not as many as we would have hoped, but um, we do expect that since this is the first year of the exemption, that that number could very well increase every year. Excellent. I think this is fantastic. And I'm all in with uh, awesome. Mr. Harris' motion. Good. So we have a motion. We have it seconded. Uh, any further discussion from the board? There are none. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries at 200%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good message to get out there that Hopkins uh, supports its seniors. Yeah. And we'd like to support more of them. Yep. Stick yeah. around. In fact, if I may, through the church, just to remind the public that when this law was passed, uh, it was limited to three years. It will require another town meeting vote to reauthorize it after three years. And when is that up? That's, this is the third year, you said, right? No, this is the third year. You said no, this is the third year. Yeah. So is that going to be next annual town meeting? Uh, we'll look into or that. sooner? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. All right. So it's not 7.30 yet, so let's get into the town manager's report. Okay. You want to do that or do you want to do liaison reports? Um, liaison reports will be fine. Sure. Yeah. Mary Jo? Well, I, I uh, <clears throat> really didn't get to too many meetings in the last couple of weeks because there were many the week before. Uh, but I understand the gala went really well at the... Uh, the art center sure. and uh, the Dewey thing was sold out nice. their gala was sold out so we had some successful things happening Good stuff right I do not have any liaison reports tonight mr. Catino yeah the uh, I was at the gala and then the uh, the uh, Dewey um, uh, candle lighting with with, with uh, a town manager and his family yeah. and that was a it was a fun really fun event great food um, the uh, uh, Upper Child's Trail, so we're, we're still working on, on working on a grant there. And uh, growth study, we, the, there was a mix up in the, putting the agenda out, so we're not meeting until later this week. Okay. I'd also attended the HA Gala, that was, it was a wonderful uh, event, it was uh, highly successful. I uh, also attended the Diwali Lighting Ceremony, oh, which yeah, was uh, which was wonderful. It's a great opportunity to meet uh, meet the families and um, bring the South Asian culture onto the common. My daughter was at that. Was she? Yeah, yep. Excellent. <laughs> I was stuck at work, but my daughter made it. Did she enjoy the sweets? Yep. <laughs> um, so for me, I have um, open space. We've uh, we've met a few times. Uh, we have another meeting tomorrow. A lot of good stuff going on there. Um, what else do we have? The Veterans Day we have coming up uh, this week. I'm on that Veterans Celebration Committee. We have a, a, there's a, I believe, a dinner on Monday night at the Woodville Run Gun Club. And is it Monday during the day um, at the Senior Center, the luncheon for the veterans? No, I'm not sure. I think there's a, yeah. whatever the, the, vet, the actual Veterans Day is, which I think is Monday. The 11th. The 11th? Uh, so if, yeah, so it's next Monday. I believe there's a luncheon at the Senior Center for the Veterans. Uh, it's where we have, um, uh, there's a lot of, like, so Carolyn Dykeman generally goes to that and speaks, and, and I know I went to the Veterans Breakfast on Friday, and they were listing the name of, uh, the names of some dignitaries they're having there for that, so it should be a pretty good, pretty good thing, so. 
Uh, if you're out and about, the uh, the Veterans Supper at um, the Gun Club in Woodville is, is always a good take. Um, and uh, that's about it. And the Veterans, um, Veterans Day ceremonies, we wait 11. Eleven. It's eleven, eleven, eleven. They always do okay. it at eleven, I believe. Okay. Uh, and any future board agenda items, Mr. Chair? Yes. So we've had a couple of t uh, nights now where folks have come in, and I don't think they've stuck around, but um, and talked about the weed situation. Okay. And I know that the weed situation is being worked on um, in the town manager's office and the DPW and others, but. I haven't heard an update on that, and it seems like at some point, you know, we're into the drawdown now. At some point, we should get an update, and the community, I think, deserves an update, too, as to where it's headed and how far down it's going to go. So I, I probably can't do that tonight because it's not mm -hmm. on the agenda, but I'd like to see that on a future agenda if we can just... And some of our alternatives so that we know what we can, what we can do because, uh, as they said, if we wait till next spring, yeah, in, but even if we in, have, I don't even know if we're going to have alternatives. Though, like, I mean, where that's that's what I'm wondering. What's yeah. the process we're going through here? Yeah, in, in, in fact, purely through the chair, very briefly, we are pursuing three alternatives. In terms of the uh, Lake Maspenok Weed Advisory Group, a public hearing has been scheduled uh, to review uh, and receive input on the application of herbicides. Secondly, the drawdown is in progress now. Um, we are permitted for a regular drawdown. We continue to investigate the opportunities for an extended drawdown, which brings me to the third piece. We're also talking with the Spindle family regarding how best to protect their water source. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when we have that future agenda item, We'll get we can talk about all those exactly. points you're touching on. Yeah. Yep. And maybe even a little bit more clarity by then. Yep. And I just also want to mention that we had a really good letter from Stu Glassman, uh, who lives on the north part of that lake, too, about the weeds. Mm -hmm. Good old Stu. Um, all right. So, Mr. Kamalu, I think we get to the. 716 and yeah. we have 14 minutes to kill why don't we jump to you know, we have nothing else to do why don't we talk, jump to the town manager report I, yes um let me circulate the following handouts to you do you mind passing this one Get one, not all of them. Yeah, just one. Mm -hmm. Everything to yourself. What do you want more? Is it, oh, just one sheet? Yeah, one each. Same thing. Sorry. No, two different dates. One is December 9th, and the other one is December 16, 1 6. Yeah. What's this? Oh, these are two different schedules? Yes. Potential yeah, schedules? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, through the chair, um, a citizen petition was submitted on November 1, 2019, uh, specifically requesting the town to rescind the vote taken under Article 47 of the annual town meeting in 2018, and also to order the select board to discontinue the Main Street Corridor project. Uh, to that end, I have circulated two potential schedules one schedule has the meeting taking place December 9th, 2019, and the other has the special town meeting taking place December 16th, 2019. The, ske the schedule is driven largely by state law, which requires the special town meeting to be held 45 days after receiving the petition. Uh, we came up with these two dates based on the timelines required to get to the meeting as well as relating them to the uh, regularly scheduled select board meeting dates. Q1 
key milestones. Uh, November 5th, 2019, on birth schedules, the board, the select board has to set the special town meeting meeting date and time. And if the second step is to send the notice for publication, uh, under the December 9th option, uh, we can send the notice as early as tomorrow. We did uh, touch base with town council regarding the required publication. Uh, the current charter specifically allows for notice to be posted online. This is the first year we'll be implementing this option. And therefore, we will let the public know that the meeting notice is published online. In the past, generally, it's posted in the local press. If the board is not inclined to go with publishing, publishing the notice online and um, desires to publish the notice in the local paper, the meeting therefore has to be on December 16th, 2019. I should point out December 16, 2019 is the 45th day. Okay. Um, we also have 10, after posting the notice, we have 10 business days before the date of the warrant to uh, publish in the local news media. Um, we also advise town boards, departments, officials of the special town meeting date and we're scheduling under the December 9th, November 6th for doing that. Similarly, under the 16th, we'll have that as the same deadline. And then articles due to the, board of, to the select board by close of business day on the 10th business day following the publication, which will be November 21, 2019, under the December 9th, 2019 uh, uh, date or the, yes, it's the same date under the December 16th, 29 calendar date. And then the board votes to sign the warrant in a publicly posted meeting. I was suggesting a special meeting under the December 9th, 2019 deadline. Uh, and that date will be November 22nd, 2019. Again, this will be a special meeting on a Friday. Um, alternatively, if the board went with the December 16th um, date, the board may sign the warrant November 28th, no, to November 22nd, 25th, 26th, 27th, or 29th. Mr. Kamala, can I jump in for a second? Yes. So, December 16th is the 45th day. Yes. We're required to have this meeting with, by the 45th day. Correct. What happens if we have a snowstorm on the 45th day? That's why we went with the December 9th option. So what happens if we have a, a snowstorm on the 45th day? I have never experienced that. I, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> That's why I believe, uh, again, it's, we offered the December 9th okay. date. <clears throat> And then finally, posting the warrant is always 14 days before the special town meeting. Uh, November 25th will be the date for the December 9th meeting, and December 2nd will be the date for the December 16th meeting. Uh, and then the special town meetings are either on the, is either on the uh, 9th or the 16th of December. So what do you need from us? A vote by the board to set the special town meeting um, either on the 9th or the 16th. So, would we discuss that as a board here, or would we make a motion? Um, discuss that as a board? We can just have a conversation about it, and then yeah. have a motion, or have a motion, and then have a conversation okay. after the motion. Yeah. So, does uh, anyone on the board have any strong feelings one way or the other? I have plenty of strong feelings on this, um, and I want to back up a little bit. So we had an annual town meeting in 2018, and we voted Article 47, and uh, that set in motion the concept of the easements, temporary, and permanent. Um, for that meeting, 
we posted the warrant. And the warrant, which we're supposed to post by law, state and local, uh, had the parcel listed in there for the special town for the, for the annual town meeting. One of the concerns that some have, have expressed is that they weren't notified that their property was on that list, even though it was published. So what are we going to do different about this, if anything? Or I know we don't have to legally, but you know, once you post the town meeting warrant, that's posting it for all to see. And as citizens in Hopkinton, they're obligated and responsible for understanding what's going on at town meetings. But what are we going to do, if anything different, about this posting concern or notification concern? We will discuss that issue with the uh, petitioners and um, get a better understanding as to how they would like to approach that issue. Remember, this is this is yeah, a petition. That's, that's not my question. Yeah. This isn't about the petitioners because yeah. once we open the warrant, which we have to vote to open the warrant too. I assume we're going to do that tonight, mm -hmm. right? Once we open the warrant, that's just one of one, many things that can happen. Yeah. So that's not my driving concern. My driving concern is the consistency and following the law and not wavering from that, yeah. right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So we have to figure out and confirm what's the legal right way to do this, to notify. If it's just the online posting, which you described early on, then people have to understand that's the posting. And no other posting is going to take place or no other notification is going to take place, which I think is what Ray would suggest, because I think that's going to be consistent with what state law and local bylaws have required us to do for the last 300 years. So we'll have to think that through a little bit as far as the posting piece goes. Um, but it is my understanding that once we set the date, if we set a date, and we're required by state law to set a date, but they might throw me in jail. I don't know if we don't do it. But <laughs> if we set a date, we have to also open the warrant. Is that correct? That is correct. And that would be tonight a motion to open the warrant? Correct. OK, so once we open the warrant, then guess what? It's a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of other stuff can come on. Um, so I'm just a little concerned about the time of year and the amount of time this issue will take to work through a special town meeting. And then if any other articles get thrown in there, what that's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to happen with that. And I also have concerns about what other articles that we previously voted might get suggested to go back on the warrant again. There's been a couple of other articles specific to this project that some people have asked me, are we going to revote those too? In terms of some land acquisition and other things, and maybe moving intersections around even more. So we have to be aware of that and cognizant of that and recognize that there could be other stuff coming at us that we can't stop, per se, once we open the warrant, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I see something. Um, so, It seems to me that if we're going to proceed and set a date, that the December 9th date would be the appropriate date to set, given the snowstorm question, uh, given the time of year and the activities others have outside of uh, this, you know, this situation. Um, I just think it's probably a more prudent date to set. I'm just concerned that we. If I make to the chair, the um, that you that only exists for now. Okay. Thank that you. that I thought we just leave the discussion. Yeah. Um, that that it really only leaves us November twenty second to uh, to do uh, any voting. Um, Vote to to sign the warrant. Yeah, to sign the warrant. And so, well, that's, that's yeah, I'm traveling to New York it. City that weekend, so that's a problem for me already. And, but, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to pick up my daughter in, in uh, Pennsylvania. So I mean, I'll have to adjust my personal schedule to try and work with it, work through this. But I think the December 16th, too, it's putting it on the edge. And it's December 16th. Yeah. The next week is the holidays kick yep. in, and then this, people are crazy busy. So with you two gone, who knows what may come up as someone may not have a quorum on the on the 
1122. I didn't say I'd be gone. I said I'd have to adjust what I'm doing. Which but there's a chance that you could be gone. Well, I have a, I have a, 12, I have a 12 hour ride, yeah. 11 and a half hour ride. So I, yeah. Couldn't we do it at 7 a.m.? Why do we have to do it in the evening? There's no timeline in the yeah, day the, itself. The, yeah, the, the board can set the time that would work for the board on that day. I mean, if we did it early morning, mm -hmm. then that I'm good would allow me to travel. Through the chair, I think um, if we bump it out to the December 16th, I think there's going to be plenty of people that are then we're dealing with the holiday schedule. Even though, I mean, if the following week is, is you know, the heart of it, there will be plenty of people leaving before then. Mm -hmm. And I think we really want this to be well attended. So I, th I think December 9th works really well. Um, I'm happy to meet early yep. in order to, to vote on this. Yep. Yep. I, I think, think we're all second. in agreement. Mary Jo, are you in agreement with the 9th? Yes, it's fine. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement with the 9th. So, so I, go, ahead. No, go ahead. I do have one question. Is uh, This is more from Mr. Kamalo. Is the, I think that we want this meeting to be very well attended. And is publishing online versus through local media going to be more effective in getting the word out, or do we have any kind of? That's the only thing that I'm, I'm a little concerned with is is uh, if people are not used to seeing the online publication um, and are looking for it in the in the local uh, newspapers. They well, I'm, I'm, even though we'll, I mean we're going to do it online, I'm quite sure that uh, Hop News will pick it up and. Um, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other independent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and we have the board too. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. formal posting, if it's online, is the formal posting. But then folks can take it and run with it from there. That works. That works. Mr. Chair, if you're a parliamentarian, I would suggest we look at that public hearing scheduled for 7:30 and table this until such time as the public Sir, hearing is complete. Thank you very much, Mr. Herr. So I see it's 7:30. Uh, we have a post of public hearing, grants of location, Park Street and corner of Grove and Maple, new singular wireless PCS, LLC, BBA, AT&T. The select board will consider approving grants of location for wireless small cell facilities, including telecommunication wires and wireless attachments. And that operative appurtenances. Appurtenances. <laughs> Pertinences. On uh, Say that uh, replacement utility poles in the public right of way at the following locations. Uh, number one, pole number one 15 near intersection of Grove and Maple. Pole number two near 10 Park Street. Mr. Uh, Chair, I move that we open the public hearing as described. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, we vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, carries. Um, should we get into this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. 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 Um, should I introduce this? Absolutely. Great. great. Uh, my name is Michael Dolan from the law firm of Brown Rudnick. Um, I'm here on behalf of my uh, client AT and T. Uh, my client, as you may know, has licenses to operate. FCC licenses to operate a national wireless telecommunications network uh, throughout the country, including here in the Commonwealth. Uh, what we're proposing here, AT&T is proposing, is a small cell antenna installation on a utility pole at two locations, the ones you described previously. Um, the small cell facility will be mounted on a uh, replacement utility pole of Eversource in the public right of way. AT&T's RF engineers targeted the proposed location due to high data demands uh, in its network. AT&T's existing macro antenna facilities, which are their big eight-foot antennas, which are on towers, on uh, building rooftops, on water tanks, things like that, that does most of the work for the wireless telecommunications networks, but there are targeted areas where there's just a little hole where uh, capacity is not where it needs to be. Consumers uh, and customers are uh, letting us know that there are issues in a targeted location. In certain targeted locations, we have these two in Hopkinton, and we believe that we can address these through the installation of uh, a small cell facility. That facility, and what that means is it's a small, unobtrusive, uh, 25 inch by 10 inch uh, 
uh, 25 inches long by uh, 10 inch diameter antenna at the top of the utility pole. Um, a small equipment cabinet mounted to the side of the pole which is 39 inches by 23 by 15 and then uh, some related fiber optic cables um, with a main electric meter shut off at uh, eight feet uh, from the bottom of the meter box. As I mentioned, that antenna will go on the top of the pole. Um, and the hope is, uh, and we've been installing these throughout the Commonwealth in several in each city and town where we think we can uh, address a uh, significant customer demand in a targeted area with this small unobtrusive facility, the, ho the, uh, the plan is that this would uh, allow AT&T to be able to handle more data at faster speeds uh, with better and more reliable coverage. Okay. Board members? No. Okay, I have a question. We've had problems with uh, telephone poles, being double poles. Yep. You say they've been doing this in other places in other towns. Have they indeed replaced the poles or are they double polling? We are running into that issue everywhere because we follow the utility. And the utility, I know that I've been before a number of select boards that have had issues with that. We agree to a condition that as part of this replacement, we will not put our facility on the new pole until the old one has been removed. Um, and You'll be waiting quite a while then, big fella. Well, <laughs> and it's up to us to put a lot of heat on them. And we've had to do that because yep. I've had more conversations on this issue. And uh, I wish the utilities were better at this, but we have to live on their poles. Yep. Um, they want us to replace this one. They want this one to be replaced by them. We can't locate on the existing one for variety of factors they determine whether it has to be replaced or not and the double poles are a huge concern throughout the commonwealth and uh you know we we try to pressure them and you know there's a little bit of leverage on us when you guys say well you can't put anything up there until the other pole's gone then our people hammer them even harder than or as hard as you often would yourself so uh I hope that's uh, an acceptable solution. I mean, short of that, there's no way to replace a pole. Um, you know, it, it's our practical way of guaranteeing that we will do everything we can to have this uh, change. I've had this a, a number of times. We've been able to uh, exert some pressure on the utility and have had success having this be a quick swap in, swap out. We, we just had one put on the main street and down on first bowl on Cedar Street, right next to uh, the drugstore. And I just, I have nightmares of them double polling everything on main street <laughs> soon. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we do need uh, some sort of really, you know, you said you won't put it on the poles until the other pole is removed. We need you know, some kind of guarantee that you are going to stand by that statement. Yeah, I mean, in, in any approval, we would agree to a condition in that regard, um, and we'd be in violation of uh, any order that uh, permitted us to do it if we didn't follow that condition. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So is it 10 Park Street in the historic district? Or am I lost? Uh, no, it's on the common. So, um, would this require historic district commission approval? No, I don't believe so. Why not? It's, out. it's uh, not a building architectural feature or structure, and it's uh, an aesthetic review that I think the telecommunications law says that you can't conduct an aesthetic review. You can or cannot? Cannot. Cannot. Right. So it's going to go up on a pole 30 feet in the air, it's at the top of the pole, is it above the wires? It's the, it'll add three feet to what a typical pole because the antenna is about two feet one inch. Okay. So as long as it doesn't have to go before the historic district, that's going to be okay. Um, but we can do a motion that includes a stipulation that it's not going to go on a double pole. If there's a double pole and it doesn't go until the pole's gone. I'm okay. Yeah. 
Does, does the uh, town point your revenue from any of these polls? Or anything? I know that's what we just was going to ask. In this case, we have a poll attachment agreement with Eversource, and there are federal guidelines as to what they can charge us. It's a nominal amount, um, but unless the poll is owned by uh, the town or on town property, uh, there's no privity of contract. Yeah, I, I know there's a hole there because I just bought a house, two, two houses up. Okay. And uh, bad connections. <laughs> That's right. These are usually, bad connection. when we come in to do something like this, it's usually where there's a real, real problem. How much range do these have? It's very small because it's very targeted. I'd say uh, anywhere from a half a mile to three quarters of a mile, if that. Okay. So it's really targeted towards very that. Very targeted. Um, so, we, uh, why don't we go to the public? Does the public have anything to say about this? Okay. Come on, come on. I'm trying to figure out what this is going to look like. You mentioned uh, Beth Kelly, 5 Ash Street. Hi. Um, I, on the Historic District Commission. Sure. So I'm concerned about how things look. Um, there was something about the poll, and I was wondering if we could see a picture of it. That's an example of one that was, that's been built. Okay, and you mentioned a 36 inch box. That box there goes on the side, and that's the antenna on the top. Okay. I was just hoping it wasn't something on the ground that was so obvious. No, it's not on the ground. It doesn't look too bad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Yep. Come on. Hi. My Hi. name is Virginia Dockstatter. Hi, Virginia. How um, are you? I think one of the poles has Where already gone live? up at Two Park Street. Okay. And the pole is on the corner of our property. Okay. Actually, it's already gone in. It is significantly taller than the pole that it was put in next to. Um, in terms of visually, I don't think it's going to be that much different than the pole that's already there. Do I understand correctly that the old pole has to fall down before the new one can oh, be used? No, taken no, down. It will be taken down. It will be taken Removed. down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only other question I had was, um, it's, a, it's a small cell reading issue, yep. and how does that compare to the big um, dishes that yeah, you so, are already using. So we included with our application uh, an RF emission study uh, that um, speaks to the emissions from a facility like this and just by way of example 25 feet away from the antenna which includes both vertical and horizontal yeah. uh, the emissions are less than one percent of the FCC allowable limit so it's a okay, fraction so. of uh, the permitted uh, levels. Okay, because that's yeah. about right where I sleep. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so, okay, question. that's what I was interested in. You live in. in the corner of Park and... And uh, Hayden Row. You've done a wonderful job at your house. Oh, great. thank you. It's, <laughs> yeah. We're still in the middle of it's that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Gorgeous. I have one question. You, you just said that... I think the old one is already gone, but I'm not sure. Okay. The new one going in. That's great. That was, could, that um, could be been normal that stuff. Could be this could be yeah. another one. That yeah. could be the case because new one's new one. when there's a make ready put in, they just throw it into their queue. And we, I've had ones before where the poll is done before we even yeah. get it approved. It would make sense that you'd have a new poll in before you yeah. get the old one down. Otherwise, but many times we sometimes have to wait for them to put in the new one, and then you know. So that's great to hear. So is there a chance we could get you to put these on about 58 other sites? <laughs> yeah. the um, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else on the public that wants to comment on this? All right. So I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting. So move. Second. Ten. Okay. Uh, so now any further the discussion? The hearing. The hearing. I'm sorry. The hearing. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Carries. Okay. Now we'll deliberate. Brian? Uh, I'm fine with adding this technology to these two spots in town. Uh, I would like the motion to include that it cannot be added to a double pole situation and uh, you have to address the pole situation before they can add the hardware. Uh, other than that, I think it's fine and uh, I don't think we have any other real issues. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the uh, grant of location uh, for new cellular wireless uh, PCS equipment um, at pole number one at 15 near intersection of Grove and Maple and pole number 10 uh, near 10 Park Street uh, with the understanding and the condition that the, there not be a double pole situation at either site. Second. Any further discussion on the motion? There are none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, getting back to the town manager's report. Okay. And the board was discussing the a schedule of the special town meeting on December 9th. Mr. Chair, we always have town meetings on Monday evening. Mm -hmm. We start town meetings, annual town meetings on Monday evening. That's been the um, practice. It's not a requirement by law, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have to do this on a Monday evening? Is it, would, would the schedule be easier for everyone involved if we did it a different night? I don't know. I really haven't mm -hmm. studied the calendar. But. Yeah. Um, there is no specific requirement to hold the special town meeting on a Monday. Again, I think as Mr. here pointed out, this is based on past practice uh, and general expectations by the public that the, the meeting would be on a Monday. Yeah, I think the perception is that's what yeah. we do. It's so yep. that makes sense, but you know, if we really get into a bind here with this the discussion about timing, um, you know, if that Friday meeting is early in the morning, does that work for you for your travel situation? Hey, I can always. Oh, I can always. Yep. Yep. We just have a fly up too. Perfect. I can make it work. Fine with me. Fine with me. We're do it like seven, seven thirty. Earlier the better. Good. Well, we're three we're patients to look at. We all, we all yeah, to yeah, we don't have to vote that tonight. That can just right. be set. Okay. Yeah, okay. It just has to be three days ahead. Yeah. All right. So where are we at? Mello, did you where are we at here? What, what else do we need to do to move this along? Would, you, would we entertain a motion now? Uh, yes. To set the meeting? Yes, and simultaneously the motion should um, open the warrant and state that the warrant will close um, November 21, 2019, Thursday, end of business day. Close the warrant. Wait a minute, just want to get the close the warrant date. Um, November 21? 21st, November 21st. I'd like to make a motion to set the date for the special town meeting to be December 9th to include two articles contained in the citizen petition and to close the warrant on November 21st. So you have to yes. open it. It opens, yeah, it opens tomorrow, yeah. To open the warrant tomorrow. Okay, well, I just Which is November, so set November 6th. Date and open the warrant. Warrant. Okay, Tonight. and to open the warrant, uh, and to open the warrant. Tonight. November 6th. Yeah. Okay. So, one more time, please, I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to set the date for the special town meeting on December 9th to include two articles contained in the citizen petition, to, to close the warrant on November 21st and open the warrant tonight, November 5th. And to close the warrant. On the 21st. I said to close the warrant on November 21st. Second. Any further discussion on the board? Mr. Chair, so I have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have a lot of mixed emotions about this. Mm -hmm. 
um, I have seconded the motion and will likely vote in favor of it. However, uh, I think this is a really bad practice for the town of Hopkinton. Uh, I've been serving in Hopkinton for 20 years now as a volunteer. We have never in my 20 years recalled an article on a town meeting uh, following a town meeting vote. This can open up a whole can of worms. We have a warrant that may open if we take this vote. Um, and others could bring forward articles specific to this project and bring forward articles they want to reopen specific to this project. We could have school building articles come forward. We could have all kinds of other issues uh, surface here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is, in my view, uh, governing through the rear view mirror. And uh, I think it's a very unfortunate situation we find ourselves in. Um, I'm not sure exactly how we got to this point, but I would strongly encourage uh, the residents of Hopkinton to think seriously about what we're doing here and why and what precedent this may set for us going forward. Uh, and even though uh, we likely will go through with this vote here tonight and through this special town meeting process, uh, if this becomes the norm, uh, it's going to be a real difficult process to govern in Hopkinton, in my view. Because let's say the schools ask for 700 grand extra in the budget next year, and we just can't make it happen. So they don't get their 700 grand. So a couple of groups of people get together, they do a signature drive, and they call a special town meeting, and they throw another 700 grand article on the table. So before you know, we're going to have this repeat process of everybody second guessing town meeting. And I just, I'm I find it uh, really concerning that state law even allows for this to happen because town meeting uh, has been going on for 300 years and the residents have every right to participate in that town meeting, but then to go back and recall votes, it's like we're impeaching town meeting in Hopkins. And uh, I just really struggle with that concept. I think it's a, a bad situation for, for, for our community. And I hope we can get through this with cooler heads prevailing and we understand uh, you know, the, the serious nature of this process and how disruptive, disruptive this could possibly be for us, not only for this situation, but for months and years to come uh, in Hopkinton. So uh, with that, I plan on supporting the motion uh, to set the town meeting, uh, but I do it with a heavy heart, frankly, as a volunteer that's worked on this for 20 years. Uh, to the, I feel like a lot of time has been wasted uh, by a lot of people, unfortunately, if this all comes to be, and uh, a very random process and rules employed to make this happen in a certain way. So, uh, but with that, I do plan on supporting it. Mr. Coutinho. Yeah, I, I concur. Uh, this is, uh, it, it really is opening up uh, the town for uh, for some things that uh, a lot of people that are supporting this article may not like the results of something else that may happen or something else that might come up and um, you know especially uh, articles that uh, I find that, that can be a major financial impact to the town and uh, you know this uh, people have worked on this for well over 20 years and um, you know, I, 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 I also will support the, uh, the motion to, to have a special town meeting, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a tough day for Hopkinton that, uh, that this could, might end up becoming a norm. Council expense. I wholeheartedly agree with everything I've heard. Um, I think state law says that we, you know, with the, with the petition that we should go forward with the special town meeting, but it does not mean that, um, I, I'm concerned about overturning previous decisions, and I think that uh, it's a poor precedent. Um, I think once the town meeting has has spoken, that we should we should go forward with it. And we planned as a town, we planned around town meeting votes, and uh, say to, to come back and try to pull the pull the rug out. I think is unfortunate, but uh, I will support this uh, special town meeting. I actually feel the same way. I remember when the article came up and there was a lot of discussion on it and there was a, a lot of uh, uh, people to spoke on it. I know I myself did and um, I just, I hate to see us redoing old 
little things at the last minute, and I, and I think it's going to cost us a lot, not just for the special town meeting, but when I look at, look at the project and I, and I see the amount of money that the town is going to spend on it, which is really very little compared to what the state and the feds are willing to put in, and the fact that just alone the main street is going to have to be regraded and repaved, and that's part of that project. And immediately upon that project not going through, we're going to have to appropriate the money to do that ourselves. And that, that includes, you know, getting the driveways in it and, and everything. And I don't know, I don't think we're going to be saving much by not going through with this project at this time. I'm not convinced we're not going to go through with the project. We're no, I'm not either. No, right, I'm not either. You're right. have to go through the process, and I think right. that's a, it's fair to go through the process, whether you like it or not. Mr. Chair, though, before we take the vote, I, I, I would like to reserve additional time on this topic since we're still in the town manager's report in this central report. Uh, the quarter project is on his agenda. I think we can speak about something else and we'll talk about specific to the project. Sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'll just put a, you know, my quick two cents in. When you said that it's a slippery slope, that's the part that gets me. It's not the Main Street Corridor project. It's the fact that something was voted in a town meeting, something was advertised, the townspeople went up, they voted for it, or they voted against it. Uh, I wish I knew this 15 years ago, uh, that we could do something like this, because I would have stood at Colella's with a board and a clipboard, and I would have had the town have another special town meeting to go down and revote Legacy Farms to see if those three votes that voted for Legacy Farms would have Two of them would have changed, and we wouldn't have had to buy legacy farms. I think it's a slippery slope. I think it, it sets a bad example. It takes a lot of power away from town, me uh, town meeting, and I think that. So I, I think that it's going to open up doors down the road that we're going to have every year. We're going to have special town meeting after special town meeting if it doesn't serve each people's particular needs or desires or that they were satisfied at town meeting. Um, you know, could I go out and get 300 signatures right now and rename the select board, the board of selectmen? Or, or could I put that back on the warrant uh, on the special town meeting? Uh, because historically I like select the board of selectmen versus select board. Absolutely, but I don't want to be uh, part of that. So. The slippery slope, um, taking the, the whole Main Street Corridor project out of it, it's the concept, the concept that I find uh, disheartening, uh, but it's their right under due process to do it, and, and um, I don't agree with it, but I will, again, support it. Mala? Yeah, through the chair, earlier there was a question regarding um, what might happen on the final day if the board went with the 16th uh, in the event that there is inclement yeah. weather. I do have an answer from our very um, um, helpful town clerk. There is a process that allows for a recess to be declared by the town moderator. That process allows uh, the town moderator to consult with public safety as well as the select board members uh, in recessing town meeting. Following that, the moderator may uh, announce a future date uh, for the continuance of the meeting and that they should do so within three days. They would announce within three days of the changing of the meeting of when the next meeting is. So that could be another 45 days yeah. from three days from the ninth. Hmm. Yeah, and, and the the, the the new, new, newly rescheduled date um, should not be later than 30 days following the date and time of the moderator's original announcement of the declaration of recess and continuation. So, so, so then we go to just, uh, January 12th, and then the next snowstorm puts us to February 15th, and the next snowstorm puts us to the middle of March. <laughs> well, we got December 9th on the table right now. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, Mr. Kamala, this is the town manager's report, so you don't need any type of motions or uh, anything. We still, have to, we still have to do the meeting. We've opened the, the town meeting. Yeah, there's a motion. You have to vote on that. Yeah. Motion's on the table. So, have we not voted on that yet? Yeah. 
So as the parliamentarian, we have a motion on the table right now that would uh, uh, set the special town meeting date for December 9th uh, and also would open the warrant, the warrant this evening. Uh, the warrant would include the two requests from the petitioners and then the warrant would close, remain open, and then which it always does, and then close on November 21st and then the Board of Selectmen would meet on November 22nd to vote to sign the warrant. That's the motion that's currently before you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we will, so no further discussion on that. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? So it carries. Okay. So, Mr. Hur, you asked for a little extra time. Yeah, Mr. Chair. So now that the logistics of the special town meeting date setting and precedent and so forth discussion is over, I want to talk about the project itself. Um, so I went in physically today and sat in the town manager's office and worked with him to put together a document uh, that addresses. Uh, it's just a three-page simple document. I've copied here if anybody wants them. Uh, it's a three-page, and I just sent them out to my colleagues here. Uh, it's a three-page document that just talks about the project concerns and questions on the left and then the project facts on the right and it goes through which sort of addresses some of the key things that have been discussed in town in recent days and weeks. Uh, I would suggest or ask that my colleagues on the Board of Selectmen uh, put a motion on the table or I'll put the motion on the table uh, so I'll do it now. I move that the Board of Selectmen um, request or, or have the chair of the board uh, send this particular document out to all media outlets to enhance uh, the discussion around the corridor project and the, the facts and figures specific there too. Second that. Okay. Any further discussion? So what this is, and there's copies, a few copies here that anybody wants to grab if they want to. Uh, we can make additional copies if needed. It just goes through what, you know, what have been some of the challenges and what we think are the facts specific to those challenges, and we'll put it out there uh, for the public to see. So, um, okay. No further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Okay. Carries? Good. Mr. Kamala, anything else? Mr. Chair, so the logistics of that motion that we just carried, that just carried, uh, would be that we need to get an email, and I have a PDF draft of that now, <coughs> that this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, uh, forward to, who should I forward that to, Mr. Kamal, the PDF? Uh, PDF to myself. I'll forward it to you, and if you could work with the chair, get that email drafted up and sent out to the yeah. media outlets, yeah. um, so that we can get the discussion going uh, yeah. around the question itself. I personally feel very strongly that this project is good for Hopkinton. I personally feel as a uh, resident of Hopkinton that uh, this process and this dialogue, this discussion has been going on for decades. I first got elected in May of 2007. I campaigned on the downtown quarter project in March, April, and May of 2007. We've been talking about it for a long time. That intersection has been on the radar screen of the planning department, the planning board, the board of selectmen, long before I even got involved. So uh, I stand, even with the special town meeting vote that I supported tonight, I stand with the project. I think the project is excellent for Hopkinton. I think there's an awful lot of misinformation out today uh, circulating around the community that we need to clean up and, and have a, a healthy dialogue at the special town meeting about what all this means. But I, as one member of the Board of Selectmen, stand with this project and think we absolutely should continue to move forward. It's for the best of Hopkinton. Albeit it's going to be a difficult couple of years, it's still for the best of Hopkinton. And I hope that the town meeting folks or, or folks will come out to special town meeting and support the project. What else? Yeah, we, we for, for years we've been uh, planning this. Uh, we, we bought some, some land down the down the Cedar Swamp just to, to handle the uh, the water runoff because what people don't understand one of the main uh, parts of this project is to deal with uh, with the stormwater. You know, we have stormwater that comes off of the, the cemetery and then the stormwater that comes off of the um, Korean church and the uh, and Masonic buildings that just runs down and 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 uh, can flood out many times does flood out the businesses that here in the historic district. 
you know, we don't have the ability to handle all the stormwater that comes off there. This project would, would fix that, that, those stormwater issues that we have right in this area. We don't have the money as a town to, to, to handle that. And that was one of the main aspects why I was behind this, was to, to help this area with the, with the stormwater runoff. And um, to, to not have that, we already invested in the, in the, in the land so that, that we would uh, put, have it, that be the infiltration point. You know, and, and then to, to, to have walkable sidewalks for downtown. You know, it, we, we all, for, for years it was always, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if we could have a, a new library? And, and we had people for it and against it. We got the library and it's great. You know, before that, when I first came to town, the, the, the new uh, police station, wouldn't it be great to have a new police station? And it was big and it was expensive and some people were against it because it was so big. But now we're, we're, we're good to almost 2030 with, the, with the, the growth of the town and everything. We have, a, we have a, fire, a, a police station that can handle it. You know, and then wouldn't it be great if we could have a replacement for the center school? You know, and, and we got that. We have a marathon. We have the marathon school, which is a state-of-the-art uh, facility. People were for it. Some people were against it. But we have the money, but we did it, and it's great. You know, but the whole thing, everything that tied it together, was to have a downtown that people could walk in, that they could bike in, they could they, that 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 was that that had, as I said, the stormwater management, and that like I had a park up at uh, up at the common, and you know, to walk across at the Korean Church. I know everybody's done it. You know, that's a long walk and it's dark out now. I'm wearing all black. It was scary. And to have the, the, the traffic calming, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, as to, to Mr. Hurst's point, it's, it's tough. It's going to be tough to handle, handle the, 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 the construction. You know, it, it's, you know, my wife had to put up with it when I just re remodeled the house. I'm remodeling another house. And it's tough during construction. But when it's all done, it's great. It was, it was tough when we were remodeling the, the, uh, the schools and the library and everything else. But when it's done, it's great. And it's really something that I really believe that can really tie the, tie the town up and, and make, it, uh, make it a lot better downtown. You know, Mr. Catino actually <laughs> took, some of my, uh, took some words right out of my mouth. But what I was going to say is whenever you go through any kind of renovation project, it's disruptive, it's difficult, and there's a lot of, lot of issues, unforeseen things. But at the, end of the, at the end, you always take a step back and say, wow, look how nice this is. Um, this is going to be a disruptive process. I am a downtown business. I have my practice downtown. It is going to be difficult. But you get through it. You figure ways through it. And I understand the concerns of the community. But I also understand the concerns of the community of Hopkinton as a whole. There's a larger group that does believe this is going to make, uh, or at least we, we voted on it and said that, yes, this is something we want. We, we want to beautify the downtown area. We want, to, we want to fix some problems that we see, and I think, that, I think this does it. And I think this is a fin an amazing opportunity where the state is providing so much funding. The town's share is such a fraction. I would hate to see us lose this, this opportunity. Well, everybody, I've heard about this project since 2002, actually. And, you know, everybody's talking about their taxes. And, and I look at, at that block on Main Street, and we really have never been able to fill it with viable, long-term, really productive businesses. <coughs> And part of that is because it, we're not attractive to uh, businesses that we could use here in town. And I think that that, you know, is, is one thing that we really have to consider with this project. The other thing that frightens me is that this has come so late in the doing and that we have had state aid and federal aid and we have had uh, the plans done and they have had the, the preparation and whatnot and we pull out and I can see projects coming that the town is going to have to pay every single penny for themselves because they're not going to come forward with this kind of aid again we, we stopped the project right at the very last minute who, who wants to who's going to want to throw their support behind us if we keep if we do this what state agency what, what federal agency is going to want to help us out again with more projects down the line 
if, if we just stop this one right now at the very end, after they've already put some money in. Doesn't make sense to me. For three million, when originally we were talking eight million, and the, the, Fed, the state and the feds have come in and they, they're willing to spend more money on us. Our, the cost of this project has dropped uh, over the years and it just doesn't make sense now to pull out the rug out from under it. That's just the way I feel about it. So, so I feel very much the same way that all the members of the board feel. Um, I think that the town has done a lot of work on this. I think that uh, probably a good reason why we're here tonight is because of that letter that went out that shouldn't have gone out a week before town meeting last year. I think if that letter didn't go out erroneously, we wouldn't be here right now. I think that letter, uh, yeah, that letter kind of flipped the hysterical switch. Um, and it really bothers me that we're here. It bothers me at this meeting. It bothers me, I think about it all the time. I come into, into dealing with people all the time where they're coming up and I'll have people come up and they'll be, I can't believe that you're even considering doing this downtown initiate, uh, you know, downtown project. And then I'll have people say, I can't believe that you're allowing this to go through, that this, this petition is going to hold up 20 years worth of work. So I'm all for, for due process. And I'm all for everybody being able to kind of do what's within the, the parameters of the law, but it's, it's just kind of th this issue right here, this um, special town meeting, is kind of indicative of how, you know, it doesn't, if it doesn't positively affect me personally, I'm going to rally my few friends in town and get a petition and, and take my ball and go home, and, and it really bothers me. Um, and, you know, some people may not be happy with my point of view, people may, I don't think I've ever cared if people are happy or not happy with my point of view. Uh, I'm a Hopkintonian through and through, I always have been, um, I've always held the town in very high regard, and um, this type of thing just really, you know, it, it harkens back to, to the kid that took his ball and went home, and it bothers me. Uh, I am going to certainly be, uh, you know, open-minded to the process and go from there. So, that said, board have anything else to say on this? No? Good. How about a sp uh, banner? Are we going to allow a banner for special town meeting? <laughs> we should be able to I think we just voted to give it we to just the voted to give I mean the, uh, the chamber. The chamber, the chamber. Right, but I, you know, this is this is a legitimate way to communicate that we have a meeting coming up. Yeah, um, we'll, so let's we'll find another location, maybe. Yeah, we'll try and coordinate dates with uh, with the chamber. Uh, as the other good thing is uh, through the generosity of the community, we now have, uh, I think, three or four signboards that we can post in different locations yeah. in town. But we have to vote. Well, I guess we wouldn't have to vote tonight to put that up. Yeah. We would want to do that at our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to do a banner, I think a banner would help everybody uh, understand what's going on and get out and okay. participate. All right. Uh, Mr. Kamalu, do you have a budget update for us? Yeah, simple message. Budgets are coming in. Numbers are pretty high. We'll be sharing uh, whatever numbers we receive with the board at the board's next regularly scheduled meeting. Good. Seeing that we have covered everything on our agenda, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, further conversation? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Thank you.